All right, so tonight I'm gonna to be trying to change the thermistor on this amplifier. We identified it as being a, a problem um, on this MTX 4300X. And all it is is this little tiny device. And what it does is it changes resistance with temperature. It's a 10K um, thermistor. So as the temperature decreases, the um, resistance will increase or decrease. I'm not sure which way it goes. I haven't measured that yet, but so let's take a look at it on the multimeter and see what it gets for a room temperature resistance. Let's see. All right. And put the probe on the resistor, thermistor. And we get about 12K at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, let me see if I can get this uh, on here a little bit more steadily. Okay, now I'm going to put my finger on it to warm it up and see which way it goes. Okay, so it decreases resistance with heat. And I'm letting go, and it's going back up. All right, good. So let's go to the microscope here, and we'll take a look at the, the board. And there's that thermistor that we had an issue with earlier in this repair. I've already lifted a leg off and what we found is that this will run, the amplifier will run without this thermistor hooked up because it is no longer any good. So we're going to get this old thermistor out of here. So we can get a little flux down on that. All right. I'm going to see if we can kind of tin this up a bit and kind of slide it out of here without burning this capacitor that's next to it okay So now that we get that out of there, let's see if we can wick some of that solder out of here. I'm going to turn the heat up on my iron a little bit. It seems to be a little low. Okay. We almost got it all out. Might add a little bit more solder just to get that old solder to flow a little bit better. Still having a little trouble there, so we'll try and solder pump it out. Try to get it nice and 
hut and it's a very awkward place there we go all right so now we're going to take the old thermistor and see if we can get a rough length on the new part let's As you can see, they are slightly different size, which is not a big deal because the, all that holds this down is a foam pad on under the heat sink when you clamp it down. So now we're going to try and clip this as close as we can to the other one. Doesn't have to be exact, of course. Somewhat close. Okay. So now we're going to try and put some shrink tube over the legs. Now this could be a little tricky. The smallest shrink tube I have is that. And I'm hoping that it will shrink down small enough. Let's say roughly that's probably about a good size. All right. We'll see if we can get these on the legs. Let's see how much we have hanging out. That should be good enough. All right, so now this is gonna get quite warm as I heat the shrink tube with my hot air rework. So I'm gonna be holding the actual sensor part with my tweezers here, and I'm going to heat the shrink tube with my hot air, hot air rework. And I'm kind of hoping that I'm gonna be also heat sinking that device a little bit while I'm heating it. So it's already shrinking down. So far, so good. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. Now we're just going to let that cool for a second. It's pretty good. It's not too hot, so that's a good thing. Let's bring the amp back over here. See if we can bring focus back in on the board. It's pretty good right there. Now, if you notice that it's gonna sit on that little hole right there in that thermal insulator. That looks like it'll do the trick. Now 
Now ideally I would probably would want to solder this from the bottom, but since I need the precision of where it's going to be on this pad, doing it from the top seems to be a little bit more beneficial. So let's see what kind of, let's actually throw a little flux on there. So we can at least get one of these legs soldered up. And then we'll move it. So I think she's in place now. So now I can actually flow a good bead of solder on them. All right. So now that that is warm, it might not fire the amp up, so I'm going to just give it a little bit of a assistance with some cooling spray. And we're going to give this amp some power and see if she comes on. Let's see. Hey, she lights up. Very good. Uh, you can barely see it from the angle that you're looking at it. Let me turn the light off. Yep, she lights up. Very good. So now what I'm going to do is just to test it. I'm going to take my hot air rework station and heat this thermistor up and see if the light goes out. So I'm just going to heat this device. I'm going to put my camera on the LED and we'll see if she goes out to see if she's properly working. There it is. She shut down. That's good. And she actually came back on. Uh, that's part of design. <laughs> because that doesn't expect you to hit to cool the heatsink that fast so at least it is working so great plug it so now is all, all I have to do is put the foam back on there when I put the heatsink back on and this amp is back in business for thermal uh, thermal overload So yeah, that's a very simple, easy repair. Um, you can get these. I got a pack of five of these 10K thermistors on eBay for like $3. So very cheap. Um, sometimes eBay is one of the best places to get some of these obscure pots. Uh, so I mean, if you would have ordered these on DigiKey or anywhere else, uh, you're going to get nailed on shipping. Um, that's the worst part about a lot of these, like Newark, uh, MCM Electronics, um, uh, uh, DigiKey is that you're going to get nailed on shipping. It's going to at least cost you 10 to $15 to ship a pack of five uh, little thermistors that weigh nothing. So it's sad, but that's the way it works. So uh, sometimes eBay is nice. You get free shipping on uh, devices like that. So, all right, I think that's it for tonight. Uh, if you like the video, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next. Have a good night.